What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender new feature tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about the custom profiles option that was added in Blender version 2.82. So this custom profiles option is contained inside of the bevel tool and allows you to create really detailed bevels inside of your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so let's start by taking a look at this cube. So I'm in edit mode right now, and if you remember in the past we've talked about using the bevel tool in order to bevel this edge off. So if you were to select this edge and you were to do a control B, you can bevel this off and you can scroll your mouse up and down to add or remove, add or remove different uh, edge loops in here in order to make this more detailed. So this is the way that things were done in the past. However, in the new version of Blender, what's happened is there's a button down here at the bottom labeled custom profile. So if you check the box for custom profile, profile, you can see how what this does is this allows you to create different profiles inside of Blender. So what this does is this allows you to set a different profile for the way this is beveled. So the first thing I want to point out is notice you're not getting this full shape in here. That's because we haven't added enough support loops in here to get the full, um, to get this full profile. So you can see how if you were to go through and count these, you've got, you've got 13 points on this edge that make up this profile and we've only set this to seven segments. So there's not enough segments in here to create this complete profile. So if I was to go in here and type a value of 13, you can see how now you would get every one of these support points showing up inside of your profile. So the number of segments you create is going to affect how smooth this shape is, but it's also going to affect the amount of geometry that's created in here. And so these custom profiles, um, there's four of them that come inside of uh, the, the default Blender installation. So this one right here, is the cornice molding and a lot of these kind of align with like architectural molding type shapes so there's also a support loops and so what a support loops does is this adds curves around the edge rather than beveling this all the way back to this full length so it adds a number of different loops right here so there's also a crown molding setting and so you can see how the crown molding has more of a pronounced curve in here and then a little recess and then finally there's one in here for stairs and so the stairs one is really interesting to me because basically what that one allows you to do is it basically creates steps inside of your shape so you can see how based on so you can see how this one bevels this off to create a number of different stairs in here and so those are the ones that are built in to Blender. However, you can also create custom profiles. So the way the custom profiles work is let's say I was to select, we'll go ahead and stick with this edge for right now and we were to do a control B to bevel it. So if we were to take this back to default, what you can do, and I'm going to turn my number of segments down to maybe like 15 or something like that, but you can actually add points in here by clicking and dragging on this line. And so notice when I do this, my profile is changing inside of my model. So you can use this to generate any custom profile you'd like using the custom profiles tool. And so let's take a look real quick at the way this handles corners. So if I was to go back into edit mode and I was to select these edges and bevel them, what you're going to notice is right now, and let's select maybe the cornice molding option. That's a good example for this. Notice that if we look at this corner right now, so right now if we look at this corner, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see that you're getting an intersection in here between the different edges. So what this is doing is this is filling in that detail between the different edges. However, it's kind of weird because it's uh, bringing everything to a point right here, which I'm not necessarily sure is exactly how like uh, molding would come together. So there's also an option for you to do this again and bevel this down. There's also an option here for cutoff corners. So what the cutoff corners does is instead of beveling this down and then uh, interacting with these in order to bring them all to a point, what it does instead is it cuts them off at the point where they start interacting. So what that does is that allows you to avoid that kind of weird fill in. So you can go either way with this, but just know that's how this handles the corners for right now. Another thing I wanted to know is you can also use this to bevel two dimensional shapes. So if I was to come in here and let's say we were to, we can just select the whole thing and bevel it. 
notice that right now nothing is happening, right? So if I click and then I move my mouse and I click again, nothing is happening. However, if I was to click and then within this tool select the option for vertex only, what that's gonna mean is that means that this is only going to work on the vertices inside of your model. It, it's only editing the vertices in this model, which is why you're getting this on all four corners that we had selected. If we were to undo this and maybe only select one vertex like this and then bevel it, and then do that same thing where we check vertex only. Notice that we can use this in order to offset and create that profile with just the one corner as well. So you can use this not only with any of the presets, but also if you were to add some detail in here like this. Notice what it's doing is it's adding in this detail and you're getting all of these different support points in here to make this follow this path. So once you were done with this, if you wanted to, you could maybe select this, extrude it up, do a lot of interesting things with that. And so you can also use this for things like this column, for example. So let's say we were to select the edges in here. This is a really good way to add detail to things like columns. So notice the way this bevels off gives you this really nice custom profile. So if we were to set it to the crown molding, it would look like the crown molding. If we were to set it to the cornice molding, it would look like the cornice molding. So just note that not only can you use this on things like this box, you can also use it on circular shapes um, like this column, for example. And we could select multiple different edges if we wanted to. So you can see how it's really easy to add this detail in here. And uh, one thing to point out, about this is when you're doing this, if you leave the clamp overlap selected, this means you can't like over bevel this. So notice if I uncheck the box for clamp overlap, um, this will allow you to bevel it past um, the edges that this is running into, which while interesting, doesn't necessarily work with this shape. If you leave that clamp overlap set, then you can only bevel it to this point. So the last thing is not only have the custom profiles been added to the bevel tool, they've also been added to the bevel modifier. So if I was to add a bevel modifier to this object right here, you can see how this is currently being beveled off. And uh, we have the same options that we usually do when we bevel something. So I can add segments and other things like that. But down here, the custom profile is also set. So you, it's the same tool set. Um, but it works with the modifier as well. So if we wanted to use this to add like molding detail or something like that, you could definitely do that. So again, same thing applies though. You just wanna make sure you have enough segments in here to actually get the detail that you want. So if I turn wireframe on, just so you can see the geometry that's being created, you can use this in order to do that. And again, note that the corners get a little bit weird. So you do need to be a little bit careful with the corners when you're doing this, but this does give you the ability to add this detail in here really quickly using this modifier. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Have you been using this tool? Um, can you think of some interesting uses for it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.